food on our table, shoes on our feet, amen. I know some of y'all know a time when you weren't sure about all that. Didn't know if you had a good place to sleep. Wasn't sure you'd have food on the table, even shoes on your feet. Some people have been through that, amen. Hey, we're blessed in America. Most of the time we don't go through that, but we, we do go through that. And You know, sometimes when God blesses us to such a great degree as he has in America, sometimes we forget his blessings, amen. We were talking in Sunday school this morning, talking about Job, and we were saying sometimes we get to the point to where we like the gift more than the giver. We forget to thank the giver for the gift. And uh, sometimes the Lord might just say, well, I'll just take that gift away and, uh, until you get your eyes focused back on me. So this is a wonderful time to do that, refocus on him, amen. Well, if you'll take your hymnals, or not your hymn, we're done with that, your Bibles, amen. Your Bibles this morning, turn to Psalm 100, Psalm 100. Appreciate Rachel singing with me on that. Psalm 100, you may say, well, of course you're going to go to Psalm 100. It's Thanksgiving. This is a classic Thanksgiving passage. But we're just going to read through it and take one verse there, and then we're going to look at some other things this morning. And uh, I don't know, uh, well, I got a sneaking suspicion, probably not going to finish this message this morning. I intend to, but of course we, we're going to have our business meeting at the end, and I want to leave plenty of time for that. And so, Lord willing, we'll finish this up tonight uh, if we get there, if we don't make it to the end. But I want to take our time and see what the Lord has for us. Psalm 100, you'll, rec you'll recognize it as soon as you begin to read. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. And now verse number four, this is our text, and maybe the most familiar verse in this passage. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be ye thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And so the psalmist here is telling us how to enter his gates. We're to enter his gates with thanksgiving. When you come before God, you ought to do so with thanksgiving. Oftentimes we come before God asking for things, don't we? And there's nothing wrong with that. He told us to bring our burdens to him, to ask for our daily bread and all those things. But we're to begin. How, how did he, in the model prayer, how did he begin? Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. He begins by praising him and thanking God for who he is. Too often people come before God, at least in their minds anyway, accusing him of something. Lord, look what's happened in my life. How could you let that happen? Questioning him about something. Lord, I don't understand that. Now, we, we've talked about Job and how he had questions for God and in the right spirit, that's okay to do that so long as we accept that everything God does is right uh, by nature and that he doesn't have to give us any answer and we'll accept whatever answer he gives us, that's fine. But sometimes we just come asking, we just come accusing, whatever. But he says to come thanking him. And you know, the longer you're saved and the more you learn what God has done for you and what he has made you to be and what he is going to do for you and you remember who you really were and uh, that you deserve nothing, the more thankful we ought to be. Amen. <laughs> That's simply true. And so we ought to come before his, uh, into his gates and into his courts with thanksgiving and praise. So of course like we said this week we're celebrating Thanksgiving. Again I've said this many times one of my favorite holidays. I love Thanksgiving. Just the idea of being with family and friends and uh, fellowship and food and football. By the way War Eagle we won last night. I'm thankful today. Amen. There's all kind of wonderful things that happen at this time of year. But of course the day is set aside for thanking God and and one of the great aspects of thanksgiving is the fact that it combines the spiritual aspect of being thankful to God with the historical aspect of our country and great things that have happened in our nations. You know, although the public schools have tried to scrub thanksgiving of any spiritual content, 
The fact is that when the pilgrims of Plymouth held their first Thanksgiving in celebration in August of 1621, it was not to thank the Indians for their assistance. Now the Wampanoag tribe had been helpful to them, but the reason for their celebration was to thank God. That was the purpose. Thank him for his bountiful blessing. And this was pointed out by one of the pilgrims in a letter that he wrote home telling about this first celebration. Uh, Edward Winslow wrote this, quote, Our harvest being gotten in, our governor sent four men on fowling, so that we might after a special manner rejoice together after we had gathered the, first, or the fruits of our labors. They four in one day killed as much fowl as with a little help besides, served the company almost a week, at which time, amongst other recreations, we exercised our arms. Many of the Indians coming amongst us and amongst the rest, their greatest king, Massasoit, with some 90 men whom for three days we, we entertained and feasted. And they went out and killed five deer, which they brought to the plantation, and bestowed on our governor and upon the captain and others. And although it be not always so plentiful as it was at this time with us, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want that we often wish you partakers of our plenty. Now the winter before, most of, many of them had died because they had tried a form of communal living. They said, Here, here's the plot of land, everybody works together and everybody just gets the benefits equally. And of course, what we suspected, knew what happened is exactly what happened. <laughs> Those that were strong, they went out and worked hard and they made a lot. Those that, that didn't want to work, they didn't do anything. Before long, the strong said, why am I working to provide for you and for your family when you're not doing anything and before long everybody was starving to death. So finally they said let's come up with a different idea. That's your plot of land, that's your plot of land, that's your plot of land. Whatever you do on it, you keep it. And as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago in the sermon, that worked very well. All of a sudden they said hey I better work hard. I'm only going to get what I get out of this. That's a biblical principle. And so at the end of that they said boy look how God has blessed President Washington expressed the same sentiment in his General Thanksgiving Proclamation of 1789. Here's what he said. Whereas it is the duty of all men to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor, and whereas both houses of Congress have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many and signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November next, to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being who is the beneficent officer, uh, author of all that the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country, previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence in the concourse and conclusion of the late war, for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty which we have since enjoyed, for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been able to establish constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted, for the civil and religious liberty which we are blessed and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge and in general for all the great and various favors which he has been pleased to confer upon us. He said this, and also that we may then unite in most humbly offering our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions to enable us all, whether in public or private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually, to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good governments, peace, and concord to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. 
given under my hand at the city of New York the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1,789 G. Washington. Folks, that's a president right there. <laughs> Amen. But you see how he said, listen, it is critically important that we recognize God's hand on our country. That God is the one who has blessed us and given us this great prosperity. I thank God for a nation that was founded on the principles of God's word. And for founding fathers who recognize that it is not government, but it is God that gives us our freedom. And that we ought to be thankful for that. You know, the pilgrims and the president had the right idea. Over and over in the Bible, we're told to be thankful. You know, all men should be thankful. But we as Christians have special reason to show our gratitude. And beyond that, think of this. Not only are you a Christian, but an American. God has truly blessed you. And so as we go into this Thanksgiving season, we want to ask ourselves these questions. We sang the song, Count Your Blessings. What are my blessings? What am I to be thankful for? Again, I said we could continue to list them from now on, but I want to give you just a few things this morning and then finish up tonight that maybe will spark your mind and you'll say, boy, I do have something great to thank God for. Let's pray. We'll get into it. Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word and once again to give thanks to you. And I pray that you'd help us as we look at just a few ideas, Lord, some things that we have to be grateful for. Lord, you'd help us to realize there's far more. And Lord, that we would truly live in a an attitude of thankfulness to you. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Number one, the first thing I'm thankful for is my faith. My faith. Amen. Colossians 2, 6 and 7, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. We ought to be thankful for our faith. Our faith is what defines us, or it ought to be. That ought to be the defining characteristic of your life, your faith. Listen, uh, the thing that defines you should not be your last name or uh, the fact that you're a man or a woman or an American or any of that. The number one thing at the bottom of it all should be that you're a Christian because that ought to guide and lead everything else you do. Y'all say, listen, I, I may be this or that, but before everything else, I'm a Christian. And because that is the number one defining characteristic of my life, everything else is influenced by that. Our faith. When I think of my faith, I'm thankful for my God. My God. We talk about faith, we mean those things that we believe and we rely on, but <clears throat> those things cannot be separated from God. God is not just our creator. He didn't just get things started and then step back and see what we could do with it. Uh, no, God is intimately involved in every aspect of our lives. That's what the Bible teaches. Romans 1 verse 21, Paul says of the fools there, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. We said many times, you go and read Romans 1, beginning in verse 16 and going down, boy, you'll see the things that are happening in our world. And you say, boy, that, this is why this is happening. This is happening because of this reason. But as he goes through there, he says it all starts because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. And he says they weren't thankful. Not being thankful to God for what he's done in your life will lead you down some very dark paths. I mean, we have a whole generation of people who believe it's okay to tell God, I don't care how you made me, I'll decide how I want to be. The Bible says we ought to say, thank you, God, for how you made me. By the way, that means everything about it. Instead of looking, boy, I'm not this and I'm not that and I wish I was like, no. We say, thank you, Lord, for how you made me. And that's just the beginning. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. I think of my heavenly Father, James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Whatever you have today, you can thank God for it. I think of my Savior, 1 Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Listen, if you've got nothing else to thank God for, if you're saved today, that's more than you could ever thank him for the rest of your life, for all of eternity. See, the Bible says that all of sin comes short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. 
that one day there's going to be a great white throne and the judge will sit there and open the books and he'll open the book of life. And in those books, we will see everything that we've done. All who are not saved will be standing before him. He'll see all that you've done and you will be counted guilty. Your only hope is if your name's written in that Lamb's book of life. But no one standing at that judgment will their name be found there. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. They'll be cast out into the lake of fire. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have earned death and hell. We have earned that because of our sin. But the free gift of salvation was earned by Jesus Christ alone on the cross of Calvary. He paid for our sins when he died. And and God said that it was the propitiation, the satisfaction. God said, I looked at that sacrifice. I was satisfied. That is the payment for sin. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There must be a time in your life when you recognize the fact, yes, I am a sinner. I do deserve to die and go to hell for my sin. But God loved me so much he sent his son Jesus to die on that old rugged cross and pay for my sin. Repent of your sin. That simply means to see them as God sees them. It's not just uh, an accident. It's not just nothing. That is sin. That's why I'm going to hell because of my sinfulness. And we turn, we ask forgiveness. Not because of anything we've ever done or anything we promised to do, but only because Christ has paid for our sins on the cross of Calvary. And if we do that, God promises to save us. Now listen, you were born on your way to hell. If you're saved now, you're on your way to heaven. That's something to be thankful for. Amen. And it's not because of anything I did. It's because of what he did. When I think of what to be thankful for, I think of my faith. I think of God the Father and God the the Son. I think of God the Holy Spirit, my comforter. John 14, verse 16, he said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Comforter is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. He does many things, including reproving the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. He convicts us of our sin and our need of salvation. He assures us of the truth of the gospel and he draws us to salvation. And once we are saved, he helps us to understand the scriptures. He takes our prayers and makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he empowers us for the ministry God has called us to do. But one thing I am so thankful for him is his comforting ministry. Every one of us have been in trials. We've been in troubles. We've been in problems and heartaches. And if you're a child of God and you are right with God, you were in that and you cried out, Lord, nobody understands what I'm going through. But his Holy Spirit brings comfort. And I know that that will continue because he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. He said, I'll send you another comfort and then he may be with you forever. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. I mentioned this before, but I'm thankful for my salvation. In Psalm 118, verse 21, David said, I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. There's nothing greater I can be thankful for than my salvation. I thank God for my Bible. Are you grateful for your Bible today? I'm I'm glad that uh, Bibles are so easily available in America. I mean, literally, you can go to the Dollar Tree and buy a Bible for a dollar. It's probably a dollar twenty-five now, but anyway, think about that. People around the world literally would give their lives for one page of this book, and we have them all over our home. That's a wonderful thing. But sometimes, when we have so many of something, we don't appreciate it as much. Do you realize that this is God's word to you? Everything God wants you to know about him, he has told you in this book. What an amazing thing. And that begins with how to be saved. But then it goes on to so much more. Thank God for my Bible. Paul told Timothy, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. One of the most important reasons that I love my Bible is because the Bible teaches me how to be saved. And it's the only place I learn how to be saved. I can't go to any other book or any other person or anything else to find out. It's in the Word of God. And so I thank God for my Bible. I thank God for my preachers. I've had preachers all through my life. I thank God for them. In Ephesians 4 it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ 
till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Hey, God has given me some great preachers going up. My first preacher and the one under whose ministry I was saved was Brother Chuck Weatherby. Boy, I thank God for the great heritage that I had to be brought up under his preaching. And then more preachers all through the, through the years until the Lord put me in the ministry, completely undeserving. But he chose to do that. Boy, I think back on that. I thank God for my preacher. I thank God for my church. 1 Timothy 3.15, But if I t- tarry long, that thou may know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Our home church is Maranatha Baptist Church in Columbus, Georgia. And I'm so thankful for a church that stands on the word of God. But I thank God also for this church. Hey, do you understand that this is my church too? (laughs) I heard of someone recently who was the pastor of a church and they found out he was never even a member. I don't understand that. (laughs) Hey, listen, I'm not just your pastor. We're in this together. Amen. We're together in this. And by the way, one of the Baptist principles is the fact that uh, there's no distinction between the clergy and the laity. We're all together. God's called me to this ministry. You're called to different ministry. We all have a ministry together. I thank God for my church here. I thank God. Listen, next year, should the Lord not bring us home first, we're going to celebrate 50 years here at Faith Baptist Church. I thank God for those who came before that started. This was the first independent Baptist church in Union County. A group that God put on their heart to start a church. And I thank God for all the pastors and Sunday school teachers and deacons and all the members and everyone down through the years right up till right now. Thank God for each and every one of you. I thank God for my church. It's the pillar and ground of truth. I thank God for my ministry. Again, 1 Timothy 1, verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Like I said, I'm not worthy of this, but he chose to put me in this. And I thank God. But guess what? You've got a ministry too. If you're saved, you have a ministry. God has given you something to do. It may not be to stand behind a pulpit, but hey, there are people you can reach that I will never be able to reach. And there are things you can do that I can't do. And he gives each of us a ministry. Instead of saying, oh, Lord, is this what I have to do today? I'll say, Lord, thank you for giving me the opportunity to witness to that person, to be an encouragement to my brother, sister, in Christ, to serve you in some way. Be thankful for that. Thank Lord for my calling. Romans 11, 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. That's one thing to have a job. Another thing to have a career. Some people get to work in their passion, but the greatest thing is a calling. And a calling is not something you choose, it's something you are chosen for. And God called me into the ministry. Again, not because I deserve it, but he chose to do that. I thank God for that. He's called you to do something as well. Just think of this. The King of kings and Lord of lords has called on you to do something for him. What a wonderful thing. There's a lot of other things I could mention. I thank God, like I said, for my church. I thank God for my ministry. I thank God for the pulpit, the opportunity to preach. Titus 1, 2, and 3, In the hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due time manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. You know, I'm a pastor, and there's a lot of things underneath that. That's an umbrella term. But the number one job under that is preacher. I'm to preach the word. That's what Paul charged Timothy. I charge thee therefore, preach the word. There's teaching, there's counseling, there's all kind of things to do, but number one is to preach the word. One day I'm going to stand before God and give an account for whether or not I preach the word. You know what I appreciate though, folks, to preach to. And I appreciate folks that tell me all the time, thank you for preaching the word. Sometimes we hear people, boy, don't preach that. Why do you preach that? Don't I appreciate a congregation that understands, hey, we need to know what does the Bible say. Preach the word. I'm not perfect in that, and I need your prayers for that. 
Listen, I, I could go on it, and Lord willing, we're going to move on that. that. All that was point number one, okay? My faith. I got two more points. Don't worry, we're not going to get them this morning. I want you to come back tonight. Because I want you to begin to continue to think and say, what is it that I can thank God for? Sometimes we have trials and troubles and our thoughts and our minds get off of the things we should be thankful for and we begin to focus on our burdens instead of counting our blessings. But oh, we are so blessed. This morning, again, if you're not saved, we would love the opportunity to take the word of God and show you how simply you can be saved today. Your eternal destination turned from going to hell going to heaven in a moment but we who are saved today boy we have a lot to be thankful for I wonder if maybe in just a moment as we have a verse of invitation you might want to come to an old fashioned altar and just kneel down say Lord I'm not here to ask for anything I'm not here to tell you anything or accuse you of anything Lord I'm here to just say thank you what a great way to start off the week of thanksgiving by thanking God let's stand together have the instrumentalist come and she'll begin a verse of invitation. You don't have to wait for that. Maybe you want to come at this time. Just come to the altar and just say, Lord, thank you. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had this morning. I pray, Lord, your Holy Spirit would move on our hearts. And, Lord, that we would respond as you'd have us to. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you want to come to the altar this morning? Just say, Lord, I just want to come and thank you for all your blessings on me. Mm-hmm.